about transportation. Venice sits in a lagoon and it's mostly water-driven transportation that's in this area because like we had talked about before, there's no cars or anything on the island. So you're thinking like, oh, you must be riding a lot of boats, but the answer to that is no, we're not riding a lot of boats. And the reason behind that is that it is obscenely expensive for a ticket. As in, it is seven and a half euros for a one-way ticket on the water bus or 20 euros for a day pass. So we have decided that for one day during our visit here, we'll buy an all day pass and do some exploring on the transportation network. And that is taking us over to a little island called Murano. And that's gonna be our first stop today. And then after that, hopefully we'll be able to hit a couple more and really get the full use out of our 20 euro obscenely expensive day pass for the bus system. Um, the crazy one, part. One thing I want to note is that a lot of people would say, like, how are people affording that? People that live on the island yeah. are not paying that much. Uh, we found out that they go and they pay for a certain pass. It's 50 euros, and then every ride they take for the next five years is. Is it five years? Five years oh. is one and a half euro. So the locals don't have to deal with the situation. Yeah. They've got the price ridiculously jacked up for just tourists. This is probably the most expensive public transportation system I've ever seen. I can't think of any place that's been more expensive. And what's insane is that the, in addition to the larger vessels like what we're on now, which is a water bus, they have smaller water taxis that you can get for like individual or personal that's use. That's a funeral. Yeah, hold They're on. They're taking there's a, somebody there's a to the island. Hold, yeah. on. hold on a sec. Okay, that's we're back. How you, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's how you get to the island. <laughs> that's how you get to the island. Actually, we found out that there is public transportation that gets over to the island, but we haven't uh, figured out exactly how it works, and it's a bit confusing. Yeah, um, and the map we had checked didn't have that route, so there's a lot of maps we had found out. But what I was uh, saying is that in addition to the water buses, there's also water taxis you can use for like personal usage and those things are like obscenely even more expensive than the water buses. We discussed the Bob Barker situation. Yeah, this guy, oh my gosh, in his 70 euro ride. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, we're gonna go check out Murano and then hopefully another island and maybe we'll end up at a cemetery. It seems to always happen. So if it's possible to hop over there, maybe we'll stop by. Walking along the dock here in Murano where all the local people have got their boats tied up and I'm looking at like how they're getting in and out of the boats and basically like here's a boat and then this little thing down here is what they're stepping on to jump onto the boat and like that's a mighty jump from there to there onto a moving boat that's got a cover on it that you somehow have to get off. I'm not clear exactly how that works. I want to see one of these people do this and I'm sure they do it like super gracefully but I would definitely end up in the water there is no question. That's not like the only one like a lot of them are like this these little tiny planks that they have to jump out to these boats like that's a that's a that's a jump. <laughs> what? The last ones at least had a plank of wood this guy's just got a stump. So we're just walking around and we've definitely gone off the path of Tourism. commerce. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And even that path wasn't like super congested or anything. It's way, way more low key here than it was over in Venice. Oh, well, yeah. I, I think anywhere compared to Venice, you're going to have that feeling. Mm -hmm. But it's less than I thought it would be. Yeah. Like we got on a boat and I felt like the boat was crammed and I was kind of like, oh, this is too much. And then we get into the place and there's really like not a whole lot going on there and nobody's being really pushy about anything. And the, we just walked a little bit farther than I think most people do. And we've ended up kind of at a school. And what I find really strange is that it is Tuesday, 11 o'clock. <laughs> there's nobody here. There is absolutely no one at this school. Maybe they're on holiday right now during this time of year. I don't know what their school holiday is like. That's interesting. Like, why is there nobody here? I guess. I mean, when we went to Isle of Man, they were on break, yeah. so there were no kids in school. <laughs> Are we hitting another break here in Italy? Is it a school or is it just a place for people to like have sports games? Maybe the school is someplace else and they come over here for a recess or playground tough time or for sports games and stuff. Maybe it's not just a yeah. separate facility or whatever. Mm. 
Um, but Where are all your kids at? <laughs> Murano's main tourist draw is that they make glass, like little figurines, like little guys like this, and some of them are bigger, and they'll make like glass jewelry and things like that, and it's all like blown glass. And I didn't see any places where they were actually blowing the glass. I mean, maybe we just didn't stumble into it, but there's quite a few little shops that when you first arrive that you walk past that have them all like in the windows and things like that. But aside from that, it just seems like it's a residential place, and it's where people are living. And seeing this big open area where they're having like track and field and stuff was kind of, um, shocking, not shocking, but we know it was noticeable because over on Venice, that stuff isn't there. There's no playgrounds. There's no like track and field stuff. There's no places no for kids to play soccer. There's basically no grass. It's just like, you know, cobblestone, concrete buildings and like little canals. That's the whole thing. So it makes me wonder if maybe this is where the community is more located as opposed to over in Venice now. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a nice little low key island and we're walking across the whole thing in like 30 minute stops. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big base either. We're going that way. Just walking out into this field is kind of noticeable because something that you don't see when you're in Venice is land. It's really difficult to tell, like, am I standing on earth? Or am I standing on something that has just been constructed by people over like millennia? So to just walk out and see earth and green and things like that after the week or so that we've been here is kind of impactful. That very much looks like we're just walking through like a little residential area right now. It's just unique because it's not packed full of people and might actually just be like kind of like a pleasant place to live if you had a boat. <laughs> I think we've been outside of the tourist area for sure. Now the crowds have kind of picked up and the artwork has picked up as well. If you're going to be a glass blowing area, show me something amazing and that looks amazing. What this reminds me of, there used to be this game at my babysitter's house and it was a cylinder. In the middle of the cylinder there were a bunch of holes and you put sticks through the holes <laughs> and then you put a whole bunch of marbles on top of the sticks and the aim was to not get any marbles in the end of the game and each player would take away a stick and then take away another stick and the marbles would fall if they became loose so if you knocked out a marble you took it and whoever had the lowest number of marbles at the end won that's what this looks like to me <laughs> did you ever play that game nope but it looks like there's a bunch of broken marbles underneath this thing. You lose. <laughs> nice cock. Thank you. I'm winning. <laughs> no Burano. <laughs> We hopped back on the ferry and uh, rode, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so in a very, very, very crammed ferry. <laughs> And it felt a bit like maybe being on the train in Tokyo, only it wobbled in a way I wasn't quite used to. Mm. Um, and we have come over to a little island called Budano. So that is Murano with a B. And this island is famous because it apparently is kind of like picturesque looking and looks different than the rest of Venice. And it is a little fisher village, fisherman's village. And um, we haven't seen any of that quite yet because we actually got off a stop ahead of the rest of the crowd because we looked at Google Maps and realized there's a bridge that connects this stop and the one everybody's gonna get off at. So let's just get off and have a little bit of a walk. Yeah. And um, the first thing we saw when we got off was like a little vineyard, which we that's our first Italian vineyard. And I don't know, that's something something about that. It's like seeing a, a rice paddy in Asia. Our first and only. Yeah, it might be our I'm only. I'm kind of surprised that we saw that. <laughs> they weren't vineyarding at the moment, but it was prepared for it. Does it have the purple? Yeah, it does. Thank you. You have one. We mentioned quite a few times how there's no cars in Venice, but there's actually also no bicycles. And part of the reason is because there's so many bridges, part of the reason is because there's so many people, and part of the reason is because the cobblestones of the roads is not laid out super evenly, so bicycling would just be a complete nightmare. However, over here on Murano and Burano, there are bicycles, and it's because basically all the things that are stopping it in Venice aren't really prevalent here. The walking paths are really smooth. There's a couple of bridges, but not too many, and the population density is 
is like significantly lower. So you can see there's like a line of bicycles on this wall behind me. Probably gonna take a pass on this one. I'm trying to be like the other people here. Put your boobs out <laughs> and stand really nice for the picture. Main draw of Burano is color. And that's a really strange thing to say about some sort of tourist thing, but it's basically that most of the apartments or houses or buildings, they're all different colors. And it's just a very pleasant kind of, gives it a beachy feel, but not an overwhelming one. It feels not otherworldly is not the way to say it. You are making me dizzy. <laughs> Otherworldly isn't the way to say it, but it definitely makes you feel like you're outside of your regular realm of non-colored houses because nowhere I've lived had colorful houses. And as amazing as Venice looks, it is All right, not... start spinning. Okay, yeah, right, okay. And spinning, and as amazing spinning, as Venice looks, it's not a colorful place in the sense that this place is. They found a contrast really heavy to the style of the buildings that are in the main part of the city. I'm getting kind of dizzy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm, I was already this, there. This lady's voguing her in the shot if everybody good, wants to good. just pause it at the right moment. <laughs> Lots of voguing. <laughs> Not only for lunch have we gotten pizza, because <laughs> every day is pizza day. We've also noticed these little balls. This one, one's, this one's a, a log. Yeah, it's a log. <laughs> a log and a ball here. The log is a crocetta, and that is like this, I guess, breading on the outside, and then inside there is ham and cheese. And I'd love to be able to see those things. I thought it was gonna be like a mozzarella stick, and the outside is, uh... ah, it's like croquet. It's potato. So they've put ham and cheese inside of a potato roll and then deep fried it. That sounds like you're not gonna be able to go wrong with that. <laughs> Check me out. I'm just gonna use my yeah, fingers. Yeah, that's a good call. Oh yeah, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> that's one thing that I'm surprised we haven't seen much of here is like mozzarella sticks. Hmm. So the predominant flavor there is the breading. Mm. The cheese isn't a very strong thing and the breading is not thick. Yeah, it's a very yeah. thin breading and then you have just like a soft doughy thing that's going on in the inside. Uh, that thing's pretty tasty. Yeah, that's what, pretty good. What's the difference? What's going on with the ball? Um, the ball is an arancino, and I was told that it's rice. And when I asked her, like, what's, which one's better, she was like, I can't really compare it. Oh, and wow. That's that looks way, way good. That's why she was like, I can't answer that question. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to use my hand on that one. That one's worthy of my hand. The, the breading looks like it's a lot thinner. It doesn't mm -hmm. have that thick bread that the other one has and they've just filled it with rice. What else is going on cheese? And like, is it like a marinara sauce or? When you're talking it... about the breading, you're talking about this part? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a potato. Potato, yeah. okay. Bread, potatoes, whatever, it's all the same. <laughs> very, very good. Oh, it's got meat and tomato and peas, green beans. And rice. Ooh, yeah, that one's good. They're both quite good. And this was at what I would probably call a not great place. So well, it's got good ratings. I mean, mm. for, it's just, this island is full of really, really expensive restaurants. Mm -hmm. And we ended up at a pizzeria because we looked at the prices of the other places and we were just like, that's out of our range. <laughs> so, but I'm glad that you found something that was like kind of exciting at the same mm. time. That yeah, we could try. I looked around and most of it was sandwiches and pizza, mm -hmm. which we're already getting a pizza and the sandwiches really didn't look that exciting. So I was like, these little balls, got some little balls on the side. When we're gonna doubt. go with that. When yeah. in doubt, go with and the balls. So now we're just gonna sit with a lovely view of the water and eat our pizza and balls. Looks can be deceiving. It's a tasty pizza. It could also be that most pizza is good pizza. But yesterday I had a bad pizza, so that's not necessarily true. <laughs> I heard a bee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ready? 
Is your other gonna blow all on me? Yeah, I know. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> you ready? What are we blowing to? Uh, did, did people cheers these? Yeah. To... I don't know. Burana? To Burana? How about to that amazing pizza? To that good pizza, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no wishes. I like that someone was just blowing oh, up. Oh man! So, let me help you out. <laughs> this tower has got a pretty strong lean going on. It's making me nervous. Among all of the touristy shops, with which there are many on this island, we stumbled across a place that looked like a pretty legit little bakery, and the prices are the lowest I've seen the entire time we've been in Italy. And the dude working in there looks like a legit old dude working in a bakery. And in their window, they had a few things that looked interesting, but of specific note, they had something called an Essie and it said that it was something that was special from this area. So we rolled in and not only did they have the normal SE, but they had the chocolate essie. So we got a chocolate essie and he told us that the chocolate is also from this area. Yeah. So um, we thought, why not? It was only two euros and it was one euro for the one without the chocolate on it, uh, which is in its location with all these tourists, I think a pretty good deal. Hmm. And- um, You could get a whole bag for five. You see, yeah. Yeah, they were selling them by the by, by the by the trash bag basically for five euro. And uh, you said you just found out something about this. What did you find Take out? Take a bite. You tell me what she thinks inside. Okay. I think the chocolate is going to be a little bit overwhelming of other flavors, so it might be kind of hard to tell. It's like a crunchy donut. What is inside? I don't know. Does it taste lemony at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's I, that's lemony. what I was surprised to read because the restaurant over there is also selling them mm. as well. Oh, I didn't look at I, the price. I wonder, Why didn't I look at the price? I wonder if that old man's making all of them on the island. That wouldn't surprise. They don't look the same. Oh, the, really? the ones that are at the restaurant, are they don't look as imperfect as these. Mm. These are like, you know, grandma made them and grandma doesn't really care yeah. too much. I'm going to dip this in your coffee because I think that that might be the way to go that's the way to go dude oh that's really tasty mm-hmm did you lemony mm. Mm. Yep. Mm. it's a really plain looking thing and I don't think I would have ever thought to get that unless he had written down that it was something special from the area yeah so I'm happy that he did that and I wouldn't have thought that it had a lemon flavor to it at all he didn't mention that to us mm -mm. Uh, I could go prying around at other shops to find that out this is gonna be a little embarrassing, but I also got another sweet. <laughs> I got this pink poof ball. I think it's like meringue or something. And we had talked about these a few days ago. And uh, this is not my first one. <laughs> I no. had one yesterday, didn't I? We were drunk on the spritz and I was like, I'm gonna get one of those meringues. <laughs> this one's pink though. Mmm, dude, I don't even care. It's just poofy sugar, but it's freaking delicious. This tastes like something I've had before, and I'm really trying to figure out what it is. It's, a, it's like a some sort of donut that I've had in the past. Dip it in here. It's just going to dissolve, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but probably not in a bad way. Hmm. No idea. Can't do it. Mm -mm. Oh, I thought it was over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You got a friend over there, Katie? Yeah, he's so clean. We're boating again, and this time it's a mystery. Just like the other guy in line said, we're going to Torcello, wherever that is. <laughs> I just figured out that Borano to me is like the Caribbean. All the colors and all of that, like that's what it feels like. That's what it seemed like to me. 
But I mean, I, I know that we're in Europe and that we're in Italy. I know the Caribbean hasn't happened, but <laughs> that's what it, uh, what it seemed like. That was like a two minute boat ride. <laughs> I can actually see the island that we were on a minute ago. And we've arrived at our new mystery island of Torchetto. And everybody's walking that way. So I guess we'll walk that way as well. some duckies tonight. They should be having my baby. <laughs> baby. That's what I heard as it was going by. That should have some sort of safety devices. <laughs> That's pretty freaky. Huh? Talk about the island. The what was there to talk about? <laughs> we went down a road. That road ended. We went down another road. It's going back to the ferry. There's like a big building that looks like it's like a church church of some sort and then a couple of restaurants i saw a cat and then and yeah we had a cat friend and then there were some ducks and they were married and they had just come here and they were like the road and then i go down another road and it's back to the ferry like yeah. i think the most the, the most exciting moment on this little island was the bridge with no handrails uh, for me it was the ducks <laughs> Well, we ended up here at the at cemetery, the cemetery. <laughs> and um, as we came up to it, it looks like a fortress as you get closer to it. And the same as with Venice, you can't really see where the island begins. It's just like it just it all goes of a sudden into the water out it's of the, the sea come bricks. Yeah. So like are you, you wonder, like, are you on something that somebody built or are you actually on an island? I'm pretty sure it's an island and they just built the walls all the way out to the edge like that. And um, when you come into it, it's kind of like things are not closed off in the sense that you can't get to them, but things are surrounded by walls and things. And one area has got a bunch of larger tombs, I guess you could call them, that are closed off, but you can look inside. And those seem like they're from like the 1800s and stuff. So those ones are pretty old. And then we came into a little courtyard that had a whole bunch that were much newer that had um, some people that had died recently, like as in the 2002, 2003 time period. And I don't know, it's kind of neat to see different styles mm -hmm. of um, graves and tombs and stuff. Yeah. All in do one little area. Do you think those area. styles are because of the times or do you think those styles are because of the money? Maybe, maybe both. Maybe both. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can, plus, I mean, like, you can only have on a little island, but so many large tombs. So maybe those just all sold out back in the day. And if you weren't an early customer, then you just didn't have a dibs on it, you know? <laughs> Calling dibs on that grave. <laughs> well, we just turned another corner and this got incredible. Uh, this is definitely a different style of tombs, and they are <sighs> encompassing. It's very tall, and there's a lot of people around you. Uh, incredibly colorful, flowers everywhere. And one thing that's amazing, we were talking in Glasgow that you don't really find out anything from people's tombstones, but these actually have a picture of the person. And I've, I've maybe seen that once or twice in my entire life at a cemetery that's usually still filled with a whole bunch of tombstones that don't have pictures on them. Incredible. I, I feel like I'm actually seeing... It's... Get out of the graveyard! <laughs> the, this uh, cemetery closes at 6 o'clock, but you know who's Stan? These sweet chickens up here. <laughs> After party at the cemetery. Oh, 
We have come back to Gam Gam. A couple days ago, maybe even yesterday, things get a bit cloudy, so you don't know when things happen. But we went to a uh, like a little bakery shop and we got some Jewish cookies and things like that. Um, and that was Gam Gam's. Uh, how would I say, their little spin-off for bakery items. But we've come to the actual restaurant because those bakery items were quite good. And I've never had Jewish cuisine. But right now, I'm hanging out with a matzo ball. And I'm kind of excited. And when I thought like matzo ball soup, I thought that the plural didn't matter, the singular didn't matter, but when it comes, it is a one ball. It looks like a standard kind of chicken soup on the outside with celery. I'm hoping that it'll just be completely different to what I think. More of a vegetable place. <laughs> what, what's in a matzo ball? <laughs> I really don't know how to describe that. <laughs> I will say that it kind of just feels like it melted a bit in my mouth, but taste-wise, it's, it's neither here nor there. Is it the taste of the soup has been sucked up by that? Or the taste of the soup is a very full flavored vegetable soup. Okay. Like, you could can this and tell people that, you know, that, that I don't want to say that it is Campbell's. I want to say that it, it's made in a way that you're like, oh, you could can that. Okay. You could totally can. It's complimentary. That. Yeah. Um, but this has definitely sucked stuff up. It's made out of meat. I don't know what kind of meat. I really don't. Know. Is it, are you sure it's made out of meat? I'm pretty <laughs> I feel like I've learned nothing about matzo balls. This is so funny. From eating a matzo ball. It's so funny because it's something we, we've heard about so much, but I've, I don't think I've ever had one either. Yeah. Um, really hard to describe. Like, even though I'm eating it, I don't know exactly what it is. And that is something that I feel you don't fall into very often. Yeah. Like, I, I think I could tell you this is chicken or pork or beef or yeah. not meat. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Not overwhelming. A, a, a wholesome food, a comfort food for sure. Okay. But not something that I would go, whoa, that's the gotta have. Sure. But I had a, me a matzo ball. I bet I almost had a meat ball. <laughs> Watch, there's gonna be no meat in there. No, probably know. not. <laughs> but I've already said I got no idea what's in there. And then the other thing that we ordered, it, this area is known as the Jewish ghetto. And when I read through the menu and saw eggplants ghetto style, I thought, hmm, probably need to try that. And four types of ghetto style came out. And that's where plural didn't work. It should have been styles, and then I would have known that four were going to show up. Um, ghetto, 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 ghetto. <laughs> I don't know which is which. Almost like a cold saute where it's kind of just sat and soaked up some oil, which is quite good. This is probably the one that I'm most interested in. Look at that. Oh. It said there would be a distinct taste. That has a distinct taste. It's like biting at the sides of my tongue. Kind of bitter. More of like a pate. The bread is warm. Gonna... That's some of the best stuff I've tasted. Oh, that's got a zing. 
And then we've got these two little guys in here. And I saw her take these from one thing to put it in a plate, and I, I literally thought this is all we were getting, was just these two pieces of eggplant. And I was like, hmm, maybe that was a bad idea. But when the four showed up, I was happy. Looks like it has a little bit of hummus on the top of it. And some chives, and it's been grilled. Not overwhelming. Is Jewish food just kind of relaxed food? I, I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I have no idea. That matzo ball is real relaxing. <laughs> Uh, overall, interesting. Um, some of the flavors are really not what I expected. Some of them are definitely not what I expected. Like this matzo ball, did not expect that it would be this relaxed. I, I thought like, not peppery, but something was going to be going on in there. But it was just kind of, hey, mom made that. <laughs> That's how I felt about it. Um, yeah. I would eat more, that's for sure. We asked our pretty waitress, like, tell us what's in a matzo ball. And she was like, I kind of know what's in a matzo ball, is what she said. Essentially, a matzo ball is like flour that has been like compounded with other things, and then they put it into a soup to boil and cook, and it expands. And the texture that it creates feels kind of meat-esque, like if you would blend it up and pureed some meat. Um, it's a very like hanpen from Odin in Japan, and the chicken in the broth fills the space and tells your brain kind of meat. So there's no meat in the matzo ball, but it's got a real meat sensation. Our Airbnb here in Venice doesn't have washing facilities, but there are laundry mats in the city. So Katie has gone over and washed our clothes. Actually, this is the second time. And we don't have a way of really drying them because there's no drying rack here. And because most of the people here that are drying their clothes string them up between buildings and stuff. And because there's construction outside of our window, there's no like line or anything to put your clothes on. So our heavier items are just getting put onto the heating units and um, that dries them fairly quickly as long as the heater is on, but that, there's not enough heating units to put all of our clothes on, so <laughs> what we've come up with is inside of the bathroom, we have um, put uh, tape, like, like packing tape, like, <laughs> and we've like hooked it here and then tied it on to like a little string thing Katie has and then wrapped it around this heating bot, and uh, this is how we have found the, the best way to dry our clothes. <laughs> It's the last day that we're gonna be here in Venice. Tomorrow we're gonna to be heading to Croatia. And we have seen a lot of Venice. And people that have been here, or people that know about the city, might be wondering like, you didn't show things like the zillions of museums that are here, or the insides of some of the, um, the like the palace that's over here. Do Do Doge's palace. Doge's palace, you know, much like luxury. that. Much yeah, Much luxury, <laughs> very Venice. Very Venice. <laughs> and, um, and people might wonder like why didn't you do that and I, th I was thinking about this actually earlier in the shower like why didn't we do that stuff and I think there's three or four different reasons and yeah. one of the reasons is that it is not something we are personally interested in I'm not a museum person um, I like going to museums if there's like something tactile there's something to do or something that I can't experience or something I can't learn about just by something I can like look up online I know that sounds terrible but a lot of stuff that's in museums you can just learn about that stuff on Wikipedia and it's just not something that I find to be useful I'm more interested in walking around the city and finding little nooks well, and crannies that's the second reason for me this is a museum in itself yeah the whole place this is, is a an museum, experience a and a thing that you don't have to pay to access it. They just let you walk around. Yeah. They're thinking about putting up tickets to where to get into Venice, you have to pay for a ticket. So <laughs> for now, this museum is free. Yeah. So, and that's kind of the other thing is it, 
like I can go into museums and I can see things that are displayed in a nice pretty way and set up in a, in a way that is like you know really glorious etc cetera, etc cetera. but I can also just walk around outside and it's just as amazing and I feel like uh, the more time you spend inside the less time you spend outside and it's just like a balance uh, another another point is that the, the museums here are expensive like you're looking at like 15 or 20 euros to go into some yep. of these museums and like if you do that every single day it starts to end up being like hundreds of dollars and that can get kind of like out of control and the last point is that I don't think that those types of like videos really make good videos like walking around in a museum look at a museum like that's not something people want to watch and I think that that's probably been documented to death in a way that's done probably way more educationally and more yeah. accurate than what we can do so that's why we haven't nailed that stuff down and why you may not have seen where we're standing right now which is like the San Marco <laughs> like, Square San Marco Square is like the center of the tourist universe here yes. and there are like a million people here taking pictures with good reason the buildings behind us and stuff are super beautiful and the artwork on the outside is amazing and it's all very famous and um the thing behind us is a big church with this like amazing looking artwork on the front and then doge's palace is right next to it, it. it's just a, a structure that we've seen it from so many different angles on the water yeah. beside the water next to it people on top of it it just looks regal as hell yeah it does and it to really think about does. how it was the much regal it was <laughs> it was the capital i guess like or not the capital but the the seat of government like the the doge is like their their version of a king or something from way back in the day and this is where he lived and like this is old stuff so like if you were a dude hundreds of years ago and you came here can you imagine what this would look like how elegant it looks elegant in today yeah. by today's standards but to think about how amazing it would have looked back in the day mm -hmm. and it sits right on the ocean and i guess like we're used to being in the uk right now like it's where we've been and they've been city walls and stuff around castles this didn't have city walls it was just open and it's like their protection was the water it's kind of covered in white and the color that they put out there just screams impeccable mm, yeah. to me and it, it's like dirty now because it's been there forever and it ju that just makes it seem like it has uh, credibility is really not the right word <laughs> credibility is a good word but much credibility much credibility <laughs> and it is like a wherewithal to still be here and be beautiful yeah yeah, that, yeah that's what i think about when i think about this square however there's a lot of people here yes. a lot of tourists yeah. a lot a lot a lot a lot of tourists like more than i've ever seen anywhere else in my life basically and this is a wednesday in a not peak season yeah we rolled over here on a weekend like we came through here on saturday a while ago and it was so busy we were like let's just not even bother shooting this right now yeah like it was just insane so the That's amount of kind people of, right now is, is not it's not big. It's not that it's bad. It's still yeah. like totally touristy. So I mean that's kind of why we don't we don't show this kind of stuff all the time. Just because I'm more interested in finding little alleyways and finding like little places that we sit and we eat a pizza next to the river. I think showing those things are more interesting. It's more what I want to see, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Yeah. Nothing says tourism like birds that are waiting for your droppings and ready to give you their droppings. This is Italian levels of ambiance. There's a guy sitting with an accordion. He is relaxed and he's gonna make your moment beautiful. This bridge in the background, right above my finger, is called the Bridge of Size. And the building directly to your right is showing the old prison. And they would take prisoners from one side to the other. And I would imagine that once you're crossing that bridge, you're in for good, so you'd probably sigh. After doing some research, I was turned on to probably, I, I might consider this to be one of the most popular restaurants here. It's called La Zucca, which means the pumpkin. And being inside the restaurant does feel a bit like being inside of a pumpkin. Uh, very cute, cozy restaurant. And we've been told that the food is just incredible quality. And it's come out, I can kind of tell just by looking at it, the quality is quite good. I haven't even taken a bite yet, and we could smell it out on the street. It was ridiculous. So we were really happy that we were coming into this location. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about was extra costs that you might get at a table when you come. Um, bread. If 
that happens on your table, more than likely you've paid kind of a seating fee, a uh, cover charge to come into the restaurant. Here, they're going to charge us two euros for that. Um, water. Tap water is not a normal thing for people to get. Um, I think we may have locked into tap water here, but uh, most of the time it's going to be bottled water and that's just kind of an Italian tradition. Like, people have been doing that for a very long time. Slowly they're starting to do tap water, but for the most part, if you're getting water and you find bread on your table, it's about five euros that you might be spending just on that. Uh, the meals that we've gotten here are quite cheap, but we realize they're starters, so they're a little small. My lasagna, it's actually 12 euros, so that's not super cheap, but it's a little small. And uh, it's got zucchini and all the layers that you'd expect from a lasagna. I had one other lasagna here in Italy. It was at a crappy restaurant. I'm really glad that I've rectified the situation. This is dense. It is dang dense. Like, it's not just, they're not messing around. There's zucchini inside, and I don't really know exactly what people put in lasagna. I just know that that is incredible. Quite good. La Zucca is not messing around, and they shouldn't be with the reputation that they have bolstered on the internet. Eric got pasta. I'm pretty jealous about his pasta. I got the lasagna because I didn't want to do pasta pasta, but some people would say lasagna is pasta, but I, lasagna is in its own crowd for me. Let's try that pasta. My pasta smells incredible. It looks like it's a white sauce pasta, and I'm saying looks like because the whole menu here is in Italian, and there is no English at all on it which makes ordering not frustrating, it's not difficult, but it seems like if you were the staff here, and the staff isn't like a bunch of random people, it seems like maybe a family run operation or something, you would just get tired of explaining the whole menu over and over and over and over. So I'm surprised it's not in English because we've seen it happen more than just when we ordered. But needless to say, I don't know exactly what's going on here. I know I've got nuts, I know I've got gorgonzola, I know I've got noodles, and I know I've got a white sauce. There is a bit of a mystery going on down here though. And the mystery is this guy. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I just pushed the fork into it though and I've got a guess that it is not meat. It's a gourd of some sort. It's possible, maybe, that that's pumpkin. Maybe. Maybe it's just because I'm inside of a pumpkin. I don't know. Um, let's get to the main event. And... Here's something of note, I didn't expect this to happen, but there are no spoons on the table and like, you know, the, the pasta and the spoon thing? I kind of expected that to be a thing, but it's not a thing. And this is not the first restaurant where I've seen no spoons, so I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Oh, it's, the cheese flavor is strong in a really good way. Um, it's this almost like a bitter taste, like on the front and the sides of your tongue, it's like really, really hitting there. Uh, that's really, really good. Um, I don't know if I've ever had a cheesy pasta before that I like this much. And I really like white sauce pasta. So this is like a dream. <laughs> It's apple. Uh, it's, it's the first fruit of the alphabet. Like, A is for apple, B is banana. Where, where were you? <laughs> Down in g -ville. I knew it wasn't a banana. <laughs> Feels like it's been a while since I've shot a bathroom video. Um, we're still at La Zucca, what I would consider to be one of the best meals that I had in Italy. Way to go internet for finding that out. Um, this is not the only bathroom that I've seen this, but it's even more striking in a restaurant where I'm like, wow, that was incredible. Where is the toilet seat? What, what is happening here? This is the third toilet that I have used that does not have this feature. It's like toilet and then toilet seat. They go together. 
I, I don't think we should be seeing them separately. And it doesn't seem like this just fell off yesterday. It seems like that's the way they're rolling here. Um, is it necessary? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it necessary. Uh, very strange. Sometimes you can make people jealous, and I'm gonna do that right now. My brother loves tiramisu. I don't. So, I'm gonna have what is considered to be some of the best tiramisu in the world, and send him some pictures, even though I don't like it very much. I'm hoping this changes my mind, obviously. Like, please, 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 please let this tiramisu change my mind. But it's not my favorite dessert. Do you know what's going on in tiramisu? It's like coffee? And stuff? I have no idea. I know there's like biscotti, this type of like little little cake in there, and pudding or like uh, custard. But other than that, I'm just got a deep breath of whatever that brown stuff is. <laughs> it's a dangerous snack. I think I have cancer now. <laughs> it's in the lungs. Mm. Very, very good. Lighter than I thought. It's so light that it goes straight into your lungs. Um, usually they end up being very uh, coffee to me and that's, it's like a darker flavor that I don't end up liking. But not overwhelming. A very good blend of flavors. I think this is just cocoa on top and it does provide that darkness and maybe the first bite wasn't so dark because I had inhaled all of the chocolate as opposed to ate all of the chocolate that that second bite was quite chocolatey. How's the cookie? Spongy. Interesting I thought it'd be crunchy. Well it's supposed to be well it sat there in the custard for so long and I think that's part of it is that it it soaks up and becomes squidgy. You, on the other hand, got a pistachio version, which I'm pretty jealous of, just because I want to try it. I didn't know they had different blends, so I'm excited to see you try that. Yeah, so pistachios, and there's actually pistachios on the top. And the reason that I got this is because the dude that runs the Airbnb that we're staying at uh, had mentioned, you know, if you go over to this like little place, it's like, this is the famous place for tiramisu in Venice. He was like, get a regular one and then get the pistachio so you get a little bit of like, you know, a different experience in both sides. And he said that the pistachio flavor isn't overwhelming in the sense that it's going to make it not a tiramisu. They've got a couple of other flavors in, the, in their case as well. But um, I don't know, pistachio is just not a flavor that usually comes to my mind about things. But here it's been in a lot of different things, gelatos and like candies and stuff I've seen uh, pistachio flavored. So I'm kind of like, you know, exploring my pistachio-ness here a little bit. Um, so it is, doesn't have the, the, um, the powder on top. So I think my lungs are gonna be okay as long as I don't honk any of these nuts down in my lungs. That sounded pretty weird. <laughs> but it does have layers and stuff going on inside. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Um, again, I'm not a tiramisu expert. I've had it like once or twice in my life. So I don't know exactly what to be looking for, but I can tell you that I'm looking for this being pretty good. The inside, in addition to all the green pudding almost consistency um, stuff is, there is some of this browner stuff. It has a little bit of a bitterness to it. And that does have like a little bit of a coffee flavor going on. And that is in a couple of layers as you go down. But the mixture with that and like the fluffy pistachio flavor is pretty good. Um, I guess that might actually be the cookie, the biscotti, I guess is what it was called, right? Yeah. And it's just sort of dissolved. Like you said, it's like soft. Hmm. This is a pretty damn good treat. I don't know if this is the best in the world, but it's the best I've ever had. <laughs> There's a classy department store in the middle of Venice and you can climb up the stairs and you can go up to the very top and they have a terrace. And from the terrace, you can see the city of Venice. And it's kind of the only place we've been that you can just get up there for free. And the view having been here for a week 
is quite impressive and I'm glad we were just talking we were just talking about this how we're yeah. glad we came here on the last day rather than the first day because if you came here on the first day you'd see this and you wouldn't know what it felt like you'd just see all this orange and you wouldn't really have a respect for what every dip in the roof means it means there's a road or there's a river and the you're tucked in the middle of it and it's just a little spot for you a little crevice for you to crawl through this little city you we've been in tons of those little crevices and you can see now where the buildings pop up and when you're in the middle of it you can't feel or understand the tops of buildings at all yeah you can't comprehend it if, it feels like if you've ever been in one of those hedge mazes mm -hmm. it feels just like the that. city feels like a huge one of those where you're just like kind of lost and then you start to sort of understand things and we could make a hedge maze out of this <laughs> that would be really cool <laughs> yeah so seeing it from above is like what it would feel like to be in a hedge maze and then at the end there's stairs and you climb up and you look at it and like oh like it all starts to make more sense like in your head and it's just it was a really cool feeling to come up and see this mm -hmm. and just that um that in addition to like venice in general like what what's your what, what are your thoughts I, I was just writing to my dad and i just wrote this is a city that this is something i've never experienced in my life no. like and i don't think you can anywhere else this is it's ridiculous ex it's extremely unique here and um, it's very, very touristy, but I want to point out that it's not gaudy levels of touristy. It's not, um, we always use this frame of reference, but most people wouldn't understand that. It's not Virginia Beach or it's not like <laughs> some sort of like place. It's just been overrun by trashiness. And there's definitely infrastructure here for the tourists, and there's definitely shops that are here because of tourism. All these mask shops and the glass blowing shops and the overwhelming number of gelato shops and stuff like that. Like, those are all present, but it doesn't feel like it's been destroyed. And it feels like there's still no. some class, even though mm -hmm. there is like a hundred to one tourists over residents here. Um, there's nobody on the street trying to talk you into things. There's nobody like trying to drag you into their shops. None of that's going on. People here are respectful. Yeah, there's, uh, and there's minimal touting. The thing that we have also just gone on and on about is how incredibly nice all the locals here are. And we are astounded, it's astounded that tourism has not killed the spirit of the people that are here they don't seem like they hate us and you kind of would expect that from a place that was just completely overrun with tourists they're totally respectful at, at most the people like that have been in the tourism industry the like the negativeness that i've seen out of that is stress like, yeah that they there's just like, too much going, going on, on. Yeah. but i've never had i've never felt like somebody was just angry at me for being what you're supposed to be here someone just taking it all in and everybody I does everybody does all. their job super well hmm. and it's no nonsense Things are super expensive here compared to a lot of other places and it's because of all these service charges and fees that they put on the stuff and it's mm. just built into how things operate here. But nobody is like sneakily trying to get one over on you or you know steal yeah. an extra dollar from you or yeah. talk you out of your money. And even the guys running the gondolas and stuff, they aren't like, hey, get on my gondola. Come on, come with me, come with me. They're just chilling, you'll waiting hear for customers. maybe gondola and most of the time you won't hear anything yeah, they don't because you know anything. what, they don't have to try. That's what it is. They don't have to try. It's because they're people offering something good. People come here to experience. Yeah. And people are going to walk up to them and they want to get on their gondolas or they want to eat that that, that gelato. Yeah. People don't have to work for the money here. It, it's and it makes, just coming. And it just makes it comfortable to be here. Yeah. It's 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 a little expensive, but it's incredible. You've never seen anything like it. And like you think what you know what it looks like in your head, but like you don't know how big it is. It's insane. Every time you walk around a corner, it's like another thing. You're like, oh my god, yeah. like another bridge. Oh my god, everything is picturesque. It's it's this nonstop. Even, even this morning, I went out to have my breakfast, and I, I picked a spot on the map, and I was going to sit at a bridge and look at this beautiful building, and I was like, all right, great. I got there, wasn't able to sit where I wanted to sit, so I just I, I got tired of being moved around because there was a lot going on in this little area, gondolas and boats and me and oh. So I moved to the side over into this little alleyway that was really, really like boring humdrum. There's nothing else going on there. And I'm just staring at this old dilapidated building and I was like, there's nothing like this anywhere. <laughs> it's just this old dilapidated building, but it is so Venice at the same time. Yeah. And, and then I, I watched like two grown men going by in a gondola and they, they were not in a relationship. Totally obvious they were not in a relationship. Just some dudes. Silent. <laughs> 
gondola <laughs> ride two dudes. So what I think this has left me with is a thirst to explore more of Italy. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what Italy is outside of this because this is Italy but it's also Venice yeah. and I would love to just go and see what else we can explore here. I want to explore the food in different areas. I want to explore the countryside. I want to explore the coasts. I feel like Italy has a lot to offer and it feels comfortable because the people here have been so awesome to us mm -hmm. and we're not going to get to do that this time. We're going to Croatia tomorrow but yeah. I, I see a very very likely possibility of a return to Italy and like a dedication of a month or something to oh, really. Oh man I'm going to be huge. Yeah to re yeah, you're going to get every fat. Day <laughs> is it, pizza every day, day is pizza day. <laughs> it has been magical. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed our final video from Amazing Venice. We can't wait to return to Italy. Up next will be a series of videos from Croatia. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. A thumbs up on the like button and leaving a comment helps our channel grow and is very appreciated. Thanks to everyone supporting us at Patreon for making these videos possible.